Good evening, and welcome to this month's edition of The School Zone. I'm your student host, Chris Clarkson. Tonight we begin our journey into The School Zone with a trip to the Washington Pavilion. Local school artists have been featured in a special art show. Let's take a look at the Off the Fridge art display. Hi, my name is Lisa Vandevet. I'm the Arts Education Curator here at the Visual Arts Center in the Washington Pavilion. And I would like to welcome you to the newest exhibit space in the Visual Arts Center which is our Off Fridge exhibit. And this is a special exhibit just for the youngest artists, our student artists in our community. And we have behind me one of the examples of the artworks from a recent show. And this is from a young artist named Bailey Bennett and an uh, example of line and shape. And as you can see, uh, it is a wonderful example of children's artwork and the whole idea behind our new exhibit space is to get the children's artwork out into the community and in a sense off the fridge. And fridge is a great place to put children's artwork and the most common place in a home that you might find um, some wonderful children's art. And in this case we've taken them off the fridge and onto the walls of our public spaces in the Washington Pavilion. If you come down, you can see some amazing pieces of art by some wonderful local talent from kids kindergarten up to age six. Our exhibit space uh, began this October with our very first show, and we've had uh, three shows, and we'll continue having shows uh, as long as we can, and work with the school districts, both public and private, and other children's organizations to uh, provide a showcase for their artwork. Um, we've taken artwork from schools or the organizations and provide them with a frame and a mat and also a gallery label. If you visit our six galleries in the Visual Arts Center, you would see the same type of treatment for the artwork. You would see uh, framed artwork professionally uh, done and matted and uh, presented very well and also a gallery label and we wanted to give the same treatment for our student artists and are pleased that we can do that and also very proud of what the kids not only create but sometimes what they write about their artwork and giving them titles and in many cases an artist statement where the artists will give you some extra information on what they thought about making the art or about how they feel about their artwork in general. Uh, we also have an opening reception for the artists, just as we would for our grown-up artists. As you might know, the Visual Arts Center has uh, some of the best in regional and often national artwork in our six galleries. And this is an extension of uh, our idea of who is an artist. And we believe everyone is an artist. So when we have our shows here, we intend to treat our young artists as professional in that way and we have a welcoming reception for them and their families. Uh, they have posters, postcards, and they invite friends and family and uh, we will be having one of our receptions on the 19th where the artists will come in and have uh, juice, cookies, treats, snacks and have a chance to meet the other artists and to show off their art. Um, being at, attending a few of these events it is great to see the students come in and run up the stairs and find their artwork very excited to show whoever's around the artwork that they have created. So the pride is very evident there and the creativity is evident there. Um, and also getting the families in. Some of the people in Sioux Falls maybe have not visited yet and maybe this will be a good chance to get out and take a look at artwork in the second floor galleries as well as the six galleries. They are free. Uh, always free to the public, open Friday nights, open Saturdays, and a great place to come and check out art from all ages. My name is Robin Raskowski. I'm the art teacher at Ace Elementary and also Eugene Field. And to get ready for this project, we watched a video on bugs. It was um, just this great video that showed close-ups of bugs, and the kids really enjoyed it, and it gave them a lot of interesting details on bugs that they hadn't learned about. The reason we watched this video on bugs is because they had been learning about invertebrates in their science class, and so I wanted to tie into what they're learning in their classroom here and also with art. And um, we also dove into books. I bought, um, brought a bunch of books from the library. So each student had about two or three books to look through and look at different types of bugs. And um, they were told to create bugs out of their imagination so they could take 
a scorpion tail with bug wings and maybe a ladybug body. Or maybe they wanted to create one that was just completely out of their emanation that had nothing to do with a bug they'd ever seen and create a new species. I have 26 students in the class and this is a fourth grade class um, from ACE. I always want to make sure that they're using their imagination. I don't want their piece to look like my piece. I want them to express um, their feelings about what they want to create. Um, when I grade pieces, I really look for, did they include the head, thorax, and abdomen? Um, did they make their bug symmetrical? Could they make connections to art, and, or excuse me, to science and math through the bugs? I don't typically look to see if it's good or if it's not good. I look for those um, curricular connections because I feel like that's more important than actually if they can draw well. Hi, I'm I'm Ben Gertner, and i and I made my artwork with Miss Robin, and my favorite part of the my the artwork was probably the coloring because because I just like bright, and I didn't want just uh just like black colors. I was the last one done with all my artwork, and I, and I think it's worth it because. I, I just really like art. <laughs> Hi, I'm Audrey Shattuck, and I did my picture work of, for Off the Fridge. It's called Bug Lake instead of Swan Lake. And I wrote a poem. It's a haiku, and it's Bugs flee away fast, exter exterminator come fast, bugs flee away fast. And we used watercolors and crayons and paper. Hi, I'm Mart Lotsky. I'm in the fourth grade of All City Elementary. This is my painting from Off the Fridge. And I think it was a great, great project. It was a chance to use our imaginations openly because our teacher let us do whatever colors we wanted, whatever kind of bugs we wanted and they could be imaginary bugs or real bugs. And I think that was just a great opportunity for us to show our creativity. I'm Nadia Shami, and I'm in fourth grade and I go to All City Elementary. And this is my, my picture, Bug Mania, for Off the Fridge. And uh, I thought it was really good to do it because we could use imagination, make up bugs, do whatever we wanted with it and put them off the picture. I don't know, I just really liked it. Okay, my name is John Jameson, and I am in third grade. And I went to the Washington Pavilion and got my picture put there. And that was a real experience for me. And I love doing artwork. And my grandma, um, she does art too, and so I felt that I just got the talent from her, so that's kind of cool. Um, my name is Miranda McDowell. I'm in fourth grade, and my teacher is Miss Hupke. And I had a very great experience doing my pictures, and I'm really proud of myself for having them in the pavilion. And I hope people enjoy my pictures. My name is Heather, and I like to draw at art and how I like to um, draw is like drawing animals and other stuff like Valentine hearts and books and let's see cats in the house playing with marbles and that was the one I got into the pavilion and I like the pavilion because you can see lots of artwork kids made and I went to the pavilion, saw my picture. Um, my name is Brooke Phillips, and um, I'm in second grade, and I was really excited to put my artwork in the museum because everyone got to see it, and I was there at the um, reception, and um, it was a silhouette. My name is Mr. Treg, and I teach at Laura Walder School K-5 through Art and it is just the most awesome thing that I could ever do. It is so much fun to see the creativity in the children. Every day I see something new that they come up with. John had mentioned uh, drawing a doodle and uh, just drew a line and then from that created this particular 
picture right here and this is one of the pictures that did enter into the Washington Pavilion and then I have a fifth grader whose name is Nick he's more of a realist and he actually placed his dogs in uh, kind of a setting like so around a Christmas tree and uh, he drew this uh, just fantastic picture of his dogs. The third one wasn't actually there, so he just kind of put that in in a way that he wanted to, uh, to see it. And that's why art is so amazing, because you just never know what uh, the kids are going to come up with. And uh, we do all kinds of things. We do things from watercolor to tempera paint to working with uh, aluminum tooling to plaster. Um, finger painting, many, many different kinds of uh, mediums. And we so thank the Washington Pavilion for allowing us this opportunity to be able to present this artwork at the Pavilion. It's such a prestigious venue and then to have the reception. I told my students it's a fancy schmancy kind of deal and so we had these little guys dressed in suits and the gals all came in sparkles and it was an awesome event. And I told my students also that uh, many times adults, there are a lot of adults who would love to have their pictures up in a museum like the Washington Pavilion and yet these students right here at Laura Wilder and in the elementary schools throughout Sioux Falls had this opportunity. So it was an awesome time for them and something that they will never forget for the rest of their lives. Washington High School recently won an award for their AP classes. Let's find out more. I'm Donna Loninger. I'm a math teacher at Washington High School and I teach AP Calculus, Foundations of Algebra 1 and Pre-Calculus. And I'm Jeff Berndt, uh, one of the physics teachers at Washington High School and I teach uh, conceptual physics, accelerated physics, and also AP physics. Um, recently we won an award for our AP curriculum in science and math here. Uh, where it comes from, it's from Siemens Westinghouse. And what originally happened was, back in 1995, um, there was a study done on math and science courses called the Third International Mathematics and Science Study. It's now called the Tim Study. Um, and in that study they compared how uh, math and science students did in about 30, 35 countries. Uh, in that study they discovered that uh, American students did not do particularly well. We were average at best, with one exception. Now, that exception was students who had taken AP Calculus or AP Physics. And the Siemens Corporation, Siemens Westinghouse, um, looked at that and said, how can we promote um, better technology and science? Because that's what they're primarily involved in. Uh, and so they decided to uh, develop an award that would uh, encourage participation in upper level science courses, specifically AP courses in both science and mathematics. And they would include uh, AP Stats, AP Calculus, AP Computer Science, AP Biology, AP Physics, um, AP Chemistry, and this year AP Environmental Science, uh, which we started this year. Um, and so they award 12 awards a year. Uh, two to each of the six regions of the AP um, College Board regions. Uh, one award is awarded for increased participation of minority students. We didn't win that one. Um, the other award is awarded to the top school for increased participation or percentage of the school that is participating in science or AP courses. And that's the award we won. Uh, we won. We won for the Midwest West region. So we're one of the top 12 schools in that criteria in the country. Uh, We've had AP Calculus for quite a while and in our department we have added AP Stats uh, recently. So we've added one of those courses and the uh, science department has added quite a few more. Yes, we started with just two courses a few years ago and now we have four. Becky Kelly received our AP coordinator received a nomination form to fill in and she did that on her initiative and we were very surprised and pleased to win so we thank her for doing that. That's not something we actually solicited, they came to us for it. Uh, they actually go to the college board and decide which schools qualify and then contact the coordinators at the schools to let them know. One of the nice things is Washington had some publicity. This was a one-page ad in USA Today and we were listed as one of the 12 schools to receive the award so that was very special for us. So we thank her for her organizational work. I'm Alex Weber. I'm a senior at Washington High School. And as far as math and science go, I've taken uh, AP Physics, and I'm currently in AP Chemistry and AP Calculus. And I don't know, the thing about Washington as far as the AP tests go, I just think we have uh, amazing teachers that really get you 
well prepared for the tests. I know I got a 5 on the AP Physics test and I don't know, I expect to do as well on the AP Calculus for sure and hopefully as well on the AP Chemistry test. Uh, my name is Eric Dressing. I'm a senior at Washington High School. Uh, I've been involved in uh, AP Biology and this year I'm taking AP Statistics and AP Environmental Science. Um, taking these classes has uh, really expanded um, my education. Um, the classes here at Washington, as far as the AP class, are much more involved than any other classes I've ever taken. Um, the teachers really know their stuff, um, and they prepare the stu all the students well uh, for, this, for the test at the end of the year. Um, I, I would truly regret not taking these classes um, because I feel like my education is, has added significantly um, due to my participation in these classes. Our last journey into the school zone will take a look at an organization who partners on many levels with the school district. We will take a look at Lutheran Social Services and find out how this partnership works. My name is Joanne Nigsted. I'm president of Lutheran Social Services of South Dakota. LSS for the last dozen years or so has named once a year a business or corporate partner, an organization with whom we relate that is critical to our serving people across the state. This year recently at a public event, we honored the Sioux Falls Public School District. And there are many reasons for our having a chance to celebrate the wonderful partnership with the Sioux Falls Public Schools. I'd like to name just three of them, and I stand that you'll hear more about some of those examples later in this particular program. Three years ago, in partnership with the Sioux Falls Public Schools and the Sioux Empire United Way, we had the honor of taking over the school-based mentoring program. When we took over at that time, there were uh, somewhere between 250 and 300 people who took time out of their workday once a week to go to a school to meet with a child for an hour. We're now pleased that we have about 1,000 people doing that. Recently, we were able to extend that program to children that are at high risk in grades 4 through 8 for activity with a mentor beyond the school day. We also have a 30-year history of partnership with the Sioux Falls Public Schools with our residential treatment program, now called Sun Oak Center. Those kids are abused, neglected, wound kids, ages 10 to 17, and a part of their 24-7 treatment experience with us is to go to school. The teachers in that school setting, a very therapeutic, supportive setting, are furnished by this, the Sioux Falls Public Schools. That's been a partnership for so many years that is really vital to our kids finding a safe place for their lives now and figuring out how to be positive in the future as they develop. We're so grateful for the teachers that have been faithful to that particular challenging task. The Sioux Falls Public Schools has appreciated that so much that they've asked us to take day students that are referred to us through the schools, kids who can be with their home and family in the evening, but need to have a school setting that's more focused, more therapeutic. They don't function well in a public school setting. We are currently uh, asking the Sioux Falls community to support building a new building so we can expand that program and particularly expand the day student program so that we can help more kids who benefit from that particular setting. So we honor the public school setting because, or school district because of that long-term partnership with our residential treatment. Uh, my name is Paul Ritter and I'm the director here at Summit Oaks Center. And what LSS does here at Summit Oaks is that we provide a residential treatment for uh, boys and girls ages 10 to 17, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And our children generally that we're taking um, tend to be, have issues with uh, anger management as well as perhaps some suicidal type issues, self-harm issues. Occasionally they'll also be physically aggressive and so our staff have to be trained how to handle those situations. And then our partnership with the school district involves us working closely with the teachers who are Sioux Falls School District employees in managing the day-to-day -day operations of the kids that live here in our residential programs or program and also those that come here just for the day school program. There's 24 kids that live here and approximately 15 kids that come to school here just for day. I'm Jan Corp Draper and I'm one of the Exceptional Children's Services Supervisors and one of my positions or jobs is to uh, supervise the Summit Oaks uh, program and this program is a joint uh, effort between Lutheran Social Services and the school district. The residential portion um, is through Lutheran Social Services and they have like 25 
um, beds that they have and residential from all over the, the state and all, or surrounding states. And the day program, um, we have slots that we have and we have students that come into the program that have had difficulty in their regular attendance center. The grades are grades 6 through 12. And we have four teachers and four education assistants that work with the students and try to keep them as close to the curriculum as possible. Um, they work with them um, on their academics and behavior at the same time. Um, the Lutheran Social Services piece is that they provide a therapist for the day school students. Uh, they have uh, at least one hour of individual group and they also work with the families to increase their appropriate behaviors. I'm Lori Stowell. I'm the day treatment counselor here at Summit Oak Center. I work with kids that come in during the school day and provide them individual group and family therapy. Um, I work with kids individually and work on s stress management, depression, coping skills, those kinds of things. In group, we work on social skills, peer relationships, um, speaking well with others, presenting ourselves well, um, skills that can be used both at school and in the community and the world of work, uh, things that will help them be successful in their home schools. My name is Marla Stoops and I've been a teacher at Summit Oaks for probably 27 years and I am a Sioux Falls School District employee and the school district provides all of the materials and curriculum needs that we have. However, Lutheran Social Services provides the building and the facility that we have here to work in. Uh, that facility has changed over the years. At one point, we were in the basement at 333 South Summit, and now we have a wonderful building at 600 West 12th Street that we seem to be outgrowing by leaps and bounds. Uh, it's a real cooperative effort that exists between Lutheran Social Services and the school district. My name is Georgie Arbus. I've been a teacher here for about 12 years. And our school is run almost like a regular school. We have the kids change classes every 50 minutes. And we try to cover the academics that they would receive in the regular public school, such as language arts, social studies math, science, or geography. However, we cannot cover all bases. We're, we do not carry science-related programs like biology or uh, the advanced courses for kids. Our main goal when a student comes here is to have them leave and try to do that by using methods that we know work with kids and improving their behavior, learning different methods of dealing with their frustration so that they can get back to public school. We often start reintegrating kids into public school after they've been here a little while and we send them back for one or two classes. We work with the teachers to see how that works. And again, our goal is to get them back into public school full time. In the third place, we're really pleased that we have a particular partnership in welcoming our newest neighbors. I, I think it's best illustrated by a story that happened before the recent change of the superintendent of the district. Dr. Keegan called me on a Saturday once last spring. The uh, school people were particularly challenged and quite upset because some of the recent kids that had come from Africa, two groups of them, a group of boys about seventh grade and a group of girls about fifth grade, if they were in normal grades, uh, had come from Liberia. Many of them had come directly from war scenes, uh, not having the stability of a refugee camp and the only thing they knew in, in life was violence. And so they entered into the school immersion center, the family immersion center here at the school, Al Costa and his staff, and it was very upsetting. The police had to be called some days because these kids simply in that unimaginable transition to new life were handling it very violently. So Dr. Keegan said, we've got to sit down and figure this out. And so we had a meeting early on with the key people from LSS, the key people from the school district, including the leaders of the schools that uh, have the family immersion program. 
and we figured out how to help these families. I so respected the school district's leadership at that point, Bill Smith and Al Coster and Dr. Keegan, who said, we need to start another one in the Family Immersion Center for these particular kids. I'm Donna Magnuson. I'm the Director for Refugee and Immigration Programs here at Lutheran Social Services. Um, I'm very happy to be able to talk about our relationship with the Sioux Falls Public Schools and the Family Immersion Center. Uh, I remember a few years ago at a meeting with Dr. Keegan and other members of Sioux Falls Public Schools in regard to um, what they were going to do in the development of the Family Immersion Center and I was very happy to see the way things that get set up. In my time here, which has been now over five years, I've had a very good working relationship with the schools. Um, we've absolutely done things in partnership, which is the way to get people served and get their needs met, um, whether it be getting kids in, enrolled into school in the regular pilot schools and the regular mainstream system, or getting them enrolled in the Family Immersion Center. Um, it's worked very, very well for us. We're very happy with the partnerships. In terms of the multiple sharing of, of things that we do with students, where we have had the parents and students going to the Family Immersion Center in the morning and bus the adults back to the uh, LSS office here for ESL classes in the afternoon. That has also worked very well. The other thing that I've really appreciated in the course of the last year has been our partnerships in regard to kids that have had some difficulties, that we have put our heads together as two agencies and said, you know, we have this little issue here and what can we do about that? And um, had some very proactive people on both sides in terms of making that happen and making it better for the lives of the students and parents that we both work with. My name is Amber Nome. I am a homeschool liaison for the ELL program, specifically here at the Family Immersion Center. Um, we work with the families that come into our school district um, as immigrants or refugees. And um, working with refugee families, we work very closely with Lutheran Social Services. Uh, we first contact the families at registration. Generally, we're contacted by a caseworker from Lutheran Social Services to set up a time um, for that family to come in. Oftentimes, the caseworker from LSS speaks the language of, of these families and will come to the registration appointment with the family. During that time, we fill out paperwork, um, get the documentation we need as far as uh, birth certificate or uh, I-94, whatever documents they have and work together with the caseworkers at registration to really explain the process that we go through at school, um, the different kinds of responsibilities that parents have. Uh, we talk about things like appropriate dress, the weather, all of the things that are new to people coming from other countries like Africa, the Ukraine, uh, and different places around the world. It reminds me of the leadership of the school district that we appreciate so much in terms of the whole race concerns in the Sioux Falls community. And that, that the assertiveness of Bill Smith and that con community group that continues. And part of that is we welcome people who have come because they are refugees. That is, because it's not safe for them to be in their home homeland for one reason or another, ethnicity, war, religion, or whatever. So we're grateful for this opportunity and we appreciate the, the chance now through this media to tell the story about a partnership that is really crucial to helping families and children in this community. Thank you to the Public School District. That is all for this edition of The School Zone. Join us the fourth Monday of each month for a new journey into the School Zone. Good night.